Welcome to Sasquatch Island, Tom Seward. This is uh, the back wall of my studio. Did a little bit of work this week and put everything I could up that would fit. A couple of the wood tracks that I make. Native design, female Sasquatch catching misbehaving children on the left. Male Sasquatch shoving bad children into the sack he carries. And one of the bowls that I just finished it recently. It's got uh, two tracks, silhouette. And the Chonok uh, Sasquatch face. As many people know, I work on these wood bowls. I have over a thousand of them that were given to me by a Master Lathe Turner, and I now use them for my canvases. There's a orca and a hummingbird bowl that I just completed recently. So I'd give you a look at my studio, all my paints, my neon Sasquatch there. They can't really see with the video. More paints. And where I sit at my desk with my two laptops and my Yeti mic. But this video is about what I told you I was working on, which was the Guidelines to Chance Encounters and Investigating of Sasquatch, also known as Bigfoot. And our Sasquatch commandments that we should follow. Always show respect. No killing, harming, or trapping. Keep respectful, safe distance. Personal protection devices while in close proximity when you have that Diane Fossey, Jane Goodall interaction. Hopefully you're having one out there. And respect your fellow investigators and no hoaxing. So I produced this uh, guidelines because uh, the grizzly bear boat tours and the orca and other whale watching tours that I did for decades we had to come up with guidelines because the government was going to come up with their guidelines and regulations and laws. And uh, we didn't want to see a short change and not be able to run our businesses properly. So we put the recommendations together. And that's what I did pertaining to Sasquatch for the guidelines. And the whole document's in, dedicated in honor of late Dr. John Bindernagel, a good friend of mine, and everyone who's in the Sasquatch family we know about John or met him and he was a great man then I go into the introduction and basically the introduction it's pretty in-depth it's basically who is Tom Seawood what is his experiences tie as a Kwakwakiwak tribal member to the Chonoha Sasquatch what his background is in regards to being a commercial fisherman going through the entire British Columbia coast uh, talking to people about their encounters beliefs and perspectives on Sasquatch and uh, the decades I was a hunting guide specializing on grizzly bears and black bears and working out in the bush and had a couple of encounters. My ecotourism experience, living and working in the bush for over 16 years or actually over 20 years doing eco-cultural tourism. That used to be my tour boat. Uh, cabins I still have that I used to do paddle with orcas with but now we do uh, Sasquatch investigations down there during the fall, winter and spring. And like I said, just who I am and, you know, things like uh, tree structures I've come across and lean-tos that Sasquatches were probably built and using. Native art I do of Sasquatch that uh, I work with SasquatchTheLegend.com in Forks, Washington and the TheBigFootStore.com who mass produce my designs for t-shirts, coffee cups, shower curtains, you name it. My boat I used to run and then it just goes through. A lot of information, you know, how I was with Dr. John Bindernig out in the field investigating at his home, talking with him at conferences, shared the stage with him and others that we know of in our community. Uh, Peggy, you know, how her and I, she introduced me to podcasts. And my first podcast I ever recorded on was with uh, Wes Germer, uh, Sasquatch Chronicles, that's in there. And my podcast series with Monster X Radio, which is still out there, called Sasquatch Island. Definitely check out MonsterXRadio.com if you want to hear me. And then my trip with Peggy to Omaha, which would also have me go back again for two weeks, working with the Omaha tribe and having all kinds of investigating encounters and then learning from Lucas White, a good friend of mine who's Omaha tribe member who lived out in the bush for many years around Macy, Nebraska on the Omaha Indian Reserve. And he's an expert when it comes to Sitonga, Sasquatch, our uh, U.S. Indian Affairs pickup truck that the chief let us use to do our work in a day and investigate at night. Some of the fleur hits we had. 
And uh, Lucas, he's such a wealth of information, I have to put him in introduction because he taught me so much. Now, the introduction, you know, it's not all about spouting off about who I am and who I've met in the Sasquatch industry and community. There's uh, Peter Byrne in the middle and, of course, Bob Gimlin on the right and me on the left. But what it's about is you got to remember that Sasquatch is not part human. We are part Sasquatch. Maybe. I don't know. Just saying that. But it leads into the guidelines. So when you get into the guidelines, you have a pretty good understanding if you don't know Tom Seawood or follow Sasquatch Island. And that way, when you do read the guidelines, you know that I used a lot of experience over many decades to come up with the guidelines that are just recommendations. It's for us as a community to look at. Now here's uh, laws pertaining to killing Sasquatch in Canada and the U.S. and, of course, the Indian North American Indian laws regarding Sasquatch of no kill, no harm, no disrespect. But then when you get into the guidelines, as I stated, you know, just to have a read there, always grant Sasquatch great respect. Never think of hurting or killing a Sasquatch. Never try to snare or trap a Sasquatch. And then it goes into all kinds of things, especially with the building investigation, sort of Sasquatch tour industry that's building. You know, you look at the grizzly bear tours. When I was doing that as a young teenager at 16, you know, no one else was doing it. Now it's a multi-million dollar industry with regulations and laws pertaining how we conduct ourselves ethically and properly. And, you know, what to do, you know, based on the whales, how we have 100 yard, 100 meter zones we can't close in on on boats or helicopters or drones or airplanes out of respect for the whales. This is something we're going to have to deal with, with the Sasquatch industry building. So we may as well, sooner than later, get it done before government forces us to do it their way. And that's the last thing we want, is some bureaucrat who knows absolutely nothing about Sasquatch investigating or being out in the bush, coming up with rules and regulations we have to adhere to. And that's why I did these guidelines and recommendations, so that once you read them and then you get into next steps, it explains about how the North American Indians in the U.S. and the Canadian First Nations have to lead the charge, so to speak, on uh, regulations, laws, uh, getting bills made into laws, but also everyone else who isn't Native to work along with us and put their recommendations into this document. It's just a draft. It's not the final one. And the conclusion just talks about, you know, where I see us all going. And of course, for the bureaucrats, the future of the Sasquatch industry, you got to remember, they have no clue or comprehension about how much money is being made in it and how much can be made in it, because it's a year-round ecotourism industry that one day we'll see, like the boys of Operation Sea Monkey, all the guys that you know of in their conferences and writing books and television shows that came out with me from Campbell River you know those are going to be happening year round all around the Pacific Northwest of Canada US and Alaska conferences carvings stores uh Cliff store is doing good you got uh Eco lodges that are starting up and more to come donut shops restaurants and who can't forget about you know the Alaska Bigfoot cruise that we did, you know, almost 400 people, 200 sold out staterooms in September of 2023, all to go on an Alaska Bigfoot cruise with uh, Peggy and I performing on stage there and others. And then the native art, Carrie Kilmurray, who's done a fabulous job with her map of Canada and Vancouver Island in regards to Sasquatch sightings. So a lot of information and I look forward to hearing from you regarding this document. So give me a phone call or an email and I'll get a copy off to you to take a look at. Now this is uh, just the guidelines and the introduction and conclusion. There's my contact information. But there's also another 80 to 100 pages that go with it, which is a book set uh, with the right recommendations in it. But the book is pretty in-depth. Everyone's always saying, Tom, when are you going to write a book? Well, guess what? I just did. So give me an email and I'll get a copy of the guideline recommendations to you. And then once I do publish this book in the coming weeks, I'm negotiating with some publishers. I'll be sure to tell everyone on Sasquatch Island, my Facebook group, 
how much the books will be. I imagine around $45 to $55. It'll be a hardcover color and uh, very unique. But I thank you very much, and I'll talk to you later.